All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so I'm going to continue my Bible study on Revelation. All right, I remember a while back I started uh, doing this again, and I got to chapters 1 and 2. And this was a year ago. Okay, so it's been a while. All right, and then also I had another one. Uh, that I did even before that and I believe I went through all 20 so let's start on chapter 3 since I already did chapters 1 and 2 alright yeah I believe I got all the way through okay so I'm gonna do this again alright and it should basically be the same as um, what I've done before, but <clears throat> I, I, I have no idea what I said before. I just know what the Bible says. So it's going to be consistent. Uh, hopefully it's going to be a little more refined. And I'm going to try to keep this at 25 minutes. I don't know if it's possible to do that, but I'm going to give it a shot. All right, so I'm going to read. Let's start... Revelation 3. Okay. And we'll see what happens here. Okay. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die for I have not found thy works perfect before God remember <clears throat> therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent if therefore thou shalt not watch I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Now isn't that interesting? Remember therefore that thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent, if therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. And thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. This is interesting because, uh, you know, obviously in my opinion, this is what we're warned about over and 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 over all throughout the Bible, really. Here, of course... Jesus is the one that uh, oh, that comes as a thief. Where am I at here? Right there, I'm sorry. I, Jesus, will come as, come on thee as a thief. In Matthew 24, we know that when Jesus comes, all of the tribes of the earth will mourn. All right? And then in uh, Revelation 1, we read that all the tribes of the earth will wail. All right? They shall wail when he comes and then of course Luke 21 we read that men's hearts will be failing them for fear when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and then we find a really good parallel in 2nd Peter chapter 3 when Jesus says behold I come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And 
the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. And here in Revelation 3, we read, I will come as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. So he's saying, watch. Watch. Now that's interesting, okay? That's interesting. Here, let me do this. Watch, therefore, this is Matthew 24. Watch, therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord does come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in which, I'm sorry, if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man comes. Who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord has made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Well, let's, let's get some meat here. All right, I'm going to do this in, in, uh, in line with what I've been teaching here lately and this uh, you know this warning if you will that we need to watch watch be watchful strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die right remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent if therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come as a thief. All right. So in Matthew 24, again, it says, You will know that it's really close to the end. Let's see. When the branch is yet tender and puts forth leaves, ye know that summer is near. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors this generation shall not pass this clearly talking about the time from Jesus death burial and resurrection until his return in the clouds of heaven don't let nobody fool you on that okay it's not rocket science now what is important here is to understand that what Jesus is telling us are right, all these things will happen and then the end comes. All these things are happening. And so there's nothing here that's preventing Jesus from coming today. Now what's very important to understand is the very first thing that he says and that is take heed that no man deceive you we live in a world where the deception is unlike any time in the history of mankind it's worse than ever I, I could get into um, you know theories of how before in the days of Noah, that there was wickedness, and that men were living a thousand years, and they were doing things that they shouldn't be doing. They were doing works that were wicked, and now, this time around, it's the spiritual things that are wicked. And the spiritual things are led by the deceptions and the deceivers. I, you know, I'm not going to get into all that, but I think it would be uh, worth discussion. That as you know, for in the old days of Noah, there are all kinds of wickedness. There's all kinds of wickedness today, but the worst kind of wickedness is. The deception. It's the spiritual wickedness. Okay. Which is worse than it was in the days of Noah. And so much so. That 
if God allowed things to play out the way they are right now, because things are getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, if God allowed things to play out, there would come a point to where nobody would be saved. But for our sake, the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. All right, so we're being told to watch. And what we're looking for, what we're watching out for, are the deceivers. For many shall come in my name, saying that I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. All right. You shall be hated of all nations. Hated. All right. The love of many shall wax cold. False prophets, which is the same thing as false teachers. False teachers, not just false teachers of the world. Now, this is specific to pretend these guys pretending to teach the Word of God. The false prophets are people that teach the words of God, but they are not the words of God, and shall deceive many. All right. False teachers could mean something in general, you know, teachers of, um, of science, falsely um, so-called science. I forget how that goes. In general, but the prophets is specific to people pretending to teach the ways of God. All right, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. And this is all this means is that there will be people being saved. Not very many. All the way to the end. All right. God's going to cut up, he's going to shorten the days before it gets to the point to where nobody will be saved. All right. It's supposed to be words of comfort, not confusion. All right, and then here in 23, if any man say hello, here is the representative of Christ, the vicar of Christ, believe it not, for there shall rise false Christ called vicars, popes, false prophets, false teachers of the word of God, and shall... Uh, shall show great signs and wonders and so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect if it's possible now most of these people that like for example that are in uh, the Catholic Church the Mormonism and so on and so forth, they're all unsaved all right if you're if you are actually saved and you're in a Catholic Church why you know it's wrong you're warned over and over and over by the in the Bible that you hold in your hands. All right, so we're warned over and over again. That's that's what we're watching out for. And of course, I mean, that's why Jesus says, "Take heed that no man deceive you." These are not words spoken in vain. All right, so let's get back to watch. All right, and, you know, and one more thing here, real quick. One more thing. At the end of Mark in particular, uh, Jesus says, What I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, let me do a check here. Doing all right. Spending 13 minutes on the first three verses. That's okay. All right. So there's a lot of this is a would be a good word study right here. All right. On the word watch. And one one verse that I particularly love. Uh, not that one, but I love that one. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. And here on verse 37. And what I say unto you, I say unto all. Watch, watch. You're going to see everything 
that is in the Word of God, in the Bible that you hold in your hands, it's all going to play out to be true. And and it almost you can almost go verse by verse and present a contrary view, the view that the world presents. All right? So we got everything that's true in the Bible and then everything that's not true in the world. All right? There's not some truth and some lies in the Bible. It's all 100% true. And it's going to play out the way exactly that it says. Okay. And, of course, our challenge is to understand it. And the key to understanding is believing the Bible that you hold in your hands are the words of God. They are God. And, uh, I mean, you should have known that. You should know that inherently. Oh, I don't know where I'm at here. In John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word is God. The Bible that you hold in your hands, they are spirit and they are life. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword dividing even to the asunder of soul and spirit and as a and of the joints of marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart this is not just an old harry potter book man this is god this is the spirit of god these are the words of god all right so let's go let's go let's go Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. All right. Walking in white means you're pure. And, of course, none of us are pure until we are born of God. And because Jesus is pure, he is so pure, his purity is purity. <clears throat> is impute on us right so he makes us pure because he's so doggone clean he's gonna make us clean no matter how filthy we are he that overcomes the same shall be clothed in white raiment <clears throat> and i will not blot out his name out of the book of life but i will confess his name before my father and before his angels all right so this is so so when you're saved, let me put it this way. When you're saved, you're, that's the judgment of God. All right, so when Jesus confesses your name, all right, before my Father and before his angels, you're sealed forever. You have everlasting life. Now I want to draw a comparison. Uh, if I can remember the exact wording. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents. I love that verse. I remember that. I think somebody shared that verse with me the day I got saved. I think it was that lady... Over oh, the first lady I spoke to, the moment when I realized <laughs> I need a Savior, Jesus is true, I'm just a dummy. The moment I realized that, I walked up to this lady. I saw that she had a cross on her, on her necklace. And I told her, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, she was very kind to me. Uh, yeah, it was a special moment. All right, so in this, of course, don't be, don't be stupid. All right, this ain't rocket science. Over one sinner that repents, that goes from unbelief to belief, that changes their mind, changes their heart, and believes that they need a savior, believes that the, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, don't be so foolish to think that means what the world says, and the world says, well. If you, uh, you know, cheat on your 
on you cheat on your wife, well, just say, oh, I repent. Oops. I repent of that. If I do it again, I'll repent of it again. That's not what that means. All right. That's what a lot of people think, but it, it's not. You'll see. Uh, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now we see this a, a number of times. Well, he that has an ear, let him hear. If you, oh boy, if you don't, believe then you don't have an ear to hear if you don't believe these are the words of god you do not have an ear to hear okay and this is in direct reference to faith without faith it is impossible to understand the key to understanding is faith all right, consider uh, Isaiah 10, make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears. He that has an ear, let him hear. All right, and if they hear, you know, first it starts with faith and they hear, then they will understand with their heart and be healed. All right, it all starts with faith all right and we okay so I, there's many parallels that i could draw from all right if i'm gonna make this 25 minutes man i better hurry up huh and unto the angel of the church in philadelphia right these things saith he that is holy he that is true he that has the key of david he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth. Alright, so this is another good reference that, hey, once you are born of God, that's it, buddy. You're stuck, Chuck. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. God is going to make them come before our feet and God is going to make them to know that God loves us not these people that call themselves Jews and this is a direct reference to those people in the Middle East today who claim to be Jews they're not and this here Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. This goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. When the Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. See, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up into the air to meet the Lord in the air. And then Jesus is going to stomp his foot. We're going to be right there with Jesus. We that are saved are going to be right there with Jesus. When he, when he, when he or when we, because we're one with Jesus. When we stomp our foot on the head of the serpent, destroying evil forever. All right, we get many, many references. Uh, Psalm 110, the Lord said unto my Lord, put... Uh, sit down with my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. All right, and that's again in Acts 2. Till I make thy foes thy footstool. Right? And then uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15. He must reign till he has put all 
enemies under his feet. This is all in reference to the same thing. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. We're up in the air, and they're going to be down at our feet. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. The hour of temptation which shall come upon the whole world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Oh, the hour of temptation is, oh, man, you know what, I, that's the, that's the end of the world, right? I'm trying to think here, was there another mention, or that's, that is the mention, that is the mention, okay, I, because I will keep thee from the hour of temptation, okay. So the hour of temptation is the end of the world, which shall come upon the whole, all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. All right, so those of us that are saved will not be tempted in this hour. All right, time's up. I did it. Okay, so we gotta we gotta keep moving here. All right, so, yeah. I did a whole video on this. I, I'm trying to just collect my thoughts. I apologize. All right, so that, uh, clearly, that's the end of the world. Okay. And so those of us that are saved will be pulled up out of this world. All right, behold, I come quickly. This is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown, or take thy crown, All right, so uh, this right here I think is important. People make a big deal out of context, and then half the people that make a big deal out of context don't know what context is and uh, don't know how to put things in context. But in the context of this, this is a message to the church in Philadelphia. And therefore, when it says... Hold fast that which thou hast, that no man take thine, thy crown. This is not in, to an individual, but to a group of people. And this is, the crown is the, the Spirit of God over the church in Philadelphia. Okay, this is not about somebody losing their salvation. This is about the church, keeping the church steady on the path of God and the Spirit of God. Where am I at here? Right there. All right, so this is okay again <clears throat> because many churches, we uh, all the churches we see today uh, in your local communities, they've all fallen off. All right, and they don't have the Spirit of God, no. And so this is a warning to them specifically. Hold fast, which thou hast. I have a men have come in and uh, into every community all around the world and change the ways of God. Him that overcomes will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the new name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem. All right, again, it's important to know and understand that New Jerusalem is above. In John 14, Jesus says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go and prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And then, of course, in Revelation 21, we'll read later, we see New Jerusalem coming down. From God out of heaven. All right, so it's clearly above. That's so important to understand. Which comes down right there. What it says right there. And the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. So this is parallel with what we're reading in Revelation 21. All right, it's amazing to me. 
that people will say when they read, uh, for example, Revelation 20. When Satan is loosed and he just goes out to deceive the nations to gather them together to compass the camp of the saints. How in the world do you imagine the camp of the saints in the beloved city is on earth? When there is scripture after scripture after scripture that says Jerusalem is above. So when Satan is loose to go out to gather the unsaved, to compass the camp of the saints, the beloved city, the beloved city is above. It has to be. There is no other possibility. And we get assurance of this time and time again, which comes down out of heaven. So this new Jerusalem, the camp of the saints, the beloved city is above. So when Satan is loosed, we're above. That's why Satan is able to have influence over the entire world. Because we're pulled out of this world. Right? Right now, Satan is restricted because Jesus has come and torn down the wall and made available the kingdom of God to whosoever believes in him. All right, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And unto the church, oh, I'm sorry, and unto the angel of the church. And if you, this word angel, for me it helps to, to view this as the spirit, a spirit of God. Angels are spirits. Okay. So when you see the, you know, it's it's not a UFO alien. That's number one. Okay. It's not a green Nephilim or whatever. It's not a Martian or, you know, any sort of creature from outer space. Okay. It's a spirit of God. And that should be plain just from reading the Bible. It should be obvious. Uh, Psalm 104, who makes his angels spirits. So this angel... Oh, where am I at here? And this angel of the church, the spirit of the church, this angel is a spirit of the church of the Laodosians. Forgive me if I say that wrong. I'll say I'll pronounce that different every time I say that word. These things saith the Amen. That's Jesus. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I would. Thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spoo thee out of thy out of my mouth. Alright, so uh, very simply in my opinion, very strong opinion. Being hot is being on fire for God. Being cold is being desolate of God. All right, and then it, so if you're on fire for God, great. If you're absolutely void of God, you still have a chance because if you realize, hey, I need a savior. I do. I need a savior. I need somebody to save me. I need saving because I'm a wretched man then you got a chance but if you're lukewarm you're in between you're worthless all right because you're a phony you're a liar and you're you're not saved and you don't believe you need a savior all right you think about Jesus says uh, I've come not for the righteous I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And that word repentance, of course, means to change from unbelief to belief that you need a Savior. All right.
Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. I don't need nothing. See, lukewarm. I don't. See, you're pretending to be righteous. Right? And you don't have any need at all to be saved. So there's no, you're no good at all. Because you're lukewarm. You're worthless. It's better that you be on fire for God or to be stone cold. Because then if you're stone cold, at least at least there, you might be uh, come to a point to where, hey, man, this sucks. This stinks. I can't take it no more. I need somebody to save me. Right? Being lukewarm is no good. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich in white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest seest. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Be on fire, and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in the Savior. Christ is not a last name. Christ is a word that means Messiah, a Savior. And we all need to be saved. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him. And he with me. It's a direct reference to being born of God. All right, the Spirit of God comes into us when we are born of God, when we are saved. And when we are saved, that'll never change. We're stuck, Chuck. We can't get out because He dwells in us and we in Him. No more can you get out and disappear, nor can He, God, get out and disappear All right. we're stuck we're united one with another alright and to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne See, Jesus has come into our body and done the work necessary for salvation. He has come into our body. He has destroyed this body. He has been in the grave, and he has raised from the dead. And, and uh, he built this new body, this imperishable, immortal, incorruptible body. And so those of us that are born of God, we will follow the path that he has already made for us. All right. He overcame, so we will overcome. All right. And then, of course, uh, I will grant thee to sit with me in my throne. And he has made us right now, right now, we sit on heavenly thrones. We that are born of God. We sit in heavenly places right now. And again, in Revelation 20... In Revelation 20, and I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, same thing, same thing, the judgment, eternal life was already given to us, all right, eternal life is given to us, we sit on heavenly thrones, right now we, he has made us kings and priests, we sit in heavenly places, and again, to him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. 